This is the Estadio Olimpico in Mexico City. There are many memorable images that still remain today. During the opening ceremonies, when more than 5,000 athletes from 112 countries march into the stadium, there is an historic moment. The last torchbearer is Norma Enriquita Basilio de Sotela, the first woman ever to be given this honor. There were other lasting images. The award ceremony for the 200 meters. Then Tommy Smith and John Carlos of the United States, the gold and bronze medal winners, bow their heads and raise their arms in the black power salute during the playing of the national anthem. Then a few days later, two spectacular performances as American athletes set world records within minutes of each other. Bob Beeman electrified the world by leaping 29 feet, two and a half inches, a record that lasted almost a quarter of a century. Followed almost immediately by Lee Evans winning the 400 meters, a record which lasted almost two decades. But the 1968 games is also the beginning of a new era of long distance running the emergence of Kenyan athletes as a world power in Olympic and international competitions. This is Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya. A city with a population of more than one million people. Outside Nairobi are fertile plateaus where large game reserves have been created for the preservation of wildlife that in recent decades has been threatened with extinction. Much of Kenya's population lives outside its cities, where transportation is not easily available. Children from an early age travel long distances back and forth to school and neighboring villages. Many believe this factor, along with Kenya's 7,000-foot altitude, have played prominent roles in the success of Kenyan athletes for more than a quarter of a century. And it all began at the 1968 Mexico City Olympics. Most of the children in Kenya, especially in the rural areas, they still, up to these days, run to school. They don't take a bus or they don't uh, ride bikes. Uh, they run to school. This is a form of training. In the 10,000 meters, the first final of the track events in Mexico City, Naftali Temu of Kenya passes Mama Wolda of Ethiopia down the stretch to make Olympic history, the first Kenyan to ever win an Olympic gold medal. Two days later, another amazing performance by Kenyan runners in the 3,000-meter steeplechase. Amos Biwat wins the gold medal and his teammate Ben Kogo the silver. But the greatest Kenyan victory of the games took place in the 1,500-meter run. Kenya's Kip Kano, who earlier had won the silver medal in the 5,000-meter run, scored a spectacular upset by defeating the heavily favored Jim Ryan of the United States. With the victory, Kip Kano became the most revered athlete in Kenya. When uh, Kip was being awarded and everybody studying for our national anthem and the flag going up, it's fantastic. This is why Kip became the um, household name of um, the Kenyans and uh, in the world. The man is still very, very much respected uh, in the many parts of the world. Kip Kano paid honor to the tradition of his Nandi tribe. For Anandi is conditioned at an early age to a solitary, stoic endurance of pain, an essential element for long-distance runners. After his return to Kenya, President Jomo Kenyatta awarded Keno the Distinguished Service Medal and the Order of the Burning Spear. Said President Kenyatta, Kipchoge Keno is a great son of Africa. The same year, he also received the highest honor his tribe can bestow. He became a Nandi elder. Munich, 1972. The opening ceremonies of the Olympic Games. One of the men not marching with the Kenyan team is Kip Kano. He has been given a special honor. Kano has been selected as one of the four runners to accompany the final Olympic torchbearer. A few days later, it is time for Kip Kano to enter center stage again. He will run the 3,000-meter steeplechase, a new event for him. In an amazing performance, he wins his second gold medal. 
his teammate Ben Gipcho comes in second. Later, Kano will try to defend his 1500 meter Olympic title. With 200 meters left in the race, Kip Kano leads Pekka Vassala of Finland, Mike Boyd third, and Rod Dixon of New Zealand fourth. Out of the final turn, Kano looks back. Vassala passes him. Pekka Vassala, Finland first. Kip Kano, Kenya second. Rod Dixon, New Zealand third. Mike Boyd, Kenya fourth. Kip Kano ends his Olympic career with two gold and two silver medals. This is Eldoret, a town in Kenya's western highlands where Kip Kano lives on his farm with his wife and seven children. And an extended family that sometimes reaches 70. Orphans whom he has taken in as his own family for almost a quarter of a century. Every child is treated as his own, and for this, Kip Kano is as revered as a humanitarian today as he is for his past athletic success. I knew how hard it is for somebody who doesn't have anything. Today here, I have 69 orphan children. They don't have father. I'm their father. My wife is their mother. So we are working for them to get education. Our main objective is to educate these people. When they have knowledge, they'll be able to fit in our society and be a good citizen of this country. I was the first Kenyan to break under four minute mile, the first Kenyan to break Olympic record, also the first Kenyan to break world record. I felt that uh, it was achievement me, for me, but I wanted to do something, you know, for my life and for my country. Always when I'm there, I'm carrying the plaque of the country, Kenya, and I was proud of my country, Kenya. The life we have today is very short, but let us leave a mark for people to remember. And so the legacy of Kipchoge Keno lives on with the children of Kenya. Kipchoge Keno, a man of great talent, a man of great pride, who today continues to live by the Olympic philosophy, to improve the human race, and strengthen understanding amongst all people.